Hello and welcome back. This is part two in the series I am doing on this IBM 5155 portable personal computer here. And if you want to have a look at the first one, I'll link it in down below. Basically just went through where I picked up this machine from an online auction site as a non-working spare parts machine. And as you may have seen, it actually works as such. It boots into the ROM based BASIC here. So there's no hard drive with the machine, it came that way. There was a floppy disk drive which I've removed and that is the subject of this video was really just to uh, get the machine to a point where I could boot it into a, an operating system. I'll take you over to the other bench where I've got my tower machine set up. Uh, for floppy disk drive and floppy disk testing. Now here's my setup here. I've got my uh, tower PC here. This is a Pentium 3 PC and I've got some floppy drives here that I'm, I've been working on and I've got to the point where I've got two working 360k drives. Now maybe three but uh, you know it was working and now it's not. The, this is the original from the luggable PC, the IBM 5155. I've had quite a few issues with these five and a quarter inch drives. And if you've ever dealt with them, you'll know that they can be quite complicated. You know, the main types of the five and a quarter inch drives are the 1.2 megabyte uh, drives, which I've got actually up in this tower here. This one here, not connected at the moment. And the, these are the other two I've got connected, they're 360k drives, so they're, they're the two main types, I'm sure there are other five and a quarter inch types. But uh, yeah, they're the common types available. Uh, sorry about the background noise here too, by the way. I've got all the windows and doors open, so because it's quite hot. <laughs> and um, you might hear lawnmowers and birds and cars and things like that. Anyway, I would recommend if you want a more of a deep dive uh, into what's involved in getting five and a quarter inch drives working properly if you are having trouble. So I highly recommend the PC Retro Techs video. I'll link it in in the description down below. There's lots of really good information there. Um, but I'll just uh, summarize the, some of the issues. The complications arise when you have unknowns like do you know if the drive's working do you know if it's a 360k or a 1.2 meg drive generally you can tell some drives will have you know the uh, information on them the model numbers make and model numbers you can look them up on the internet figure out whether they're 360k or 1.2 meg so 360k that's uh, double density the 1.2 megs are high density drives they are generally fairly reliable, uh, but they need cleaning, lubricating. There are a multi multitude of jumper settings and resistor packs, you know, for termination. You know, there's a lot of variables and that's not to mention, you know, <laughs> do you have uh, decent discs? you know are you testing them with known good discs things like that so sometimes quite hard to get to a good starting point you know where you've got a set of good discs you know they work and then you can end up with sort of inconsistencies like i'll explain soon uh, with these drives where they appear to work sometimes and then you'll just run into a situation where they'll just appear to stop working and then they'll start working again for some unknown reason. I've probably got a peculiar issue here. I'm not 100% sure whether this is a common sort of issue or not, but I'll take you through what I found. I was, I got to the point here, right, after, I mean, literally three days of messing around, not full days, but, you know, good chunks of the day, three days of messing around with these drives. I've got a bunch down here, some 1.2 megs, uh, 360s, you know, various states, not either faulty or I haven't got them set right. There's another one just here, you know, that, that's a hard drive that I tried in the machine, didn't boot. Uh, that's from a 5160 
So, you know, maybe it just needs configuration set. But yeah, suffice it to say that this has been a fun experience. And I mean that in quotes. Uh, it has been a great learning experience and I have had a lot of fun, but I've had a bit of frustration as well, to be honest. I'll try and demonstrate the issue that I'm having here. I'll just explain quickly some of the things I've found with these drives. This drive here is a T, oh, it's a Chinon drive. I don't know the model number because the labels are scraped off there. I found with this drive here uh, that I had to have the terminator pin set, that term pin here set. Now if you're using these on a PC, the drive select should always be 1 or the second position in. If the drive select pins are labeled 0 through 3, uh, pin drive select 1 is the one that you want to use on both drives if you've got two drives connected. If the drive selects labelled 1, 2, 3, 4, well then you have the drive select set on the number 2, so it's the second position in. And I found with this drive it would only work if I had the term Terminator pin on, which works okay here because we're on the last, it's the last drive on the cable, we've got it uh, after the twist here. Yeah, I won't go through too much explanation of the uh, drive cable twist at this stage. There's plenty of information online about that. The rule of thumb is that the last drive on the cable you would have terminated, which I've got on this drive. This drive, uh, you can see here, there's actually a, an empty socket here, and that'll be for the terminator resistor pack. So I don't have that installed. I've got drive select one there. This is the original IBM drive. I'll try and uh, demonstrate this. I hope you can see everything in the shot here. Just turn on this uh, PC here. So the problem I was having was that the driver would be working fine. I would confirm the floppy disk drive was working correctly, you know, 100% reliably on a, on a disk that, you know, was a known good disk. I could format it and, and uh, whatnot. I'll show you the image disk utility that I'm using. And then I would go, okay, well the drive's good. Let's go and format some media. And I would grab some media like this here. I found, you know, I've got a bunch of these and I was going through heaps of these and the, the format would just fail every time. It would say something like uh, no sector, zero sector or something. I'll see if I can replicate this issue. So just format A there, sorry if you can't read the screen there, format A colon, insert a disk, checking disk format. Now this is what I'm getting quite often, invalid media or track zero bad disk unusable. I was seeing that all the time, every single time I tried to format a disk. And then I would go back and try and read a good known disk. So this is a good known disk here that I've been using. And if I go here and say, all right, well, maybe that disk is faulty. Put in a good disk format. Yes, another disk, go. Okay, it's working now. What I was finding is sometimes even with a good known disk, after the failed attempt with uh, this disk here that you just saw, I was finding that good known disks just would fail every single time to reformat. And I thought the drives were going faulty on me. I tell you, there's been some really hair tearing moments at times. I, you know, uh, so perfectly good disk, right? Great disk, no problem there. Just from memory, the high density disks use a higher current, write current is it, on the drive and I don't think you can write a one point, I don't think you can format a 1.2 media in the 360 drives. Uh, sorry, I, I am still learning all about this so yeah, you have to excuse that. Well that one's, that one's trying to format but it's having trouble. It's just uh, a bad disk there. Just retrying the format.
yeah, struggling. <laughs> so at that stage, you know, I know that's more than likely a bad disc, so I just uh, control C that and I put that into the bad pile. Just up the back there. I'm assuming they're bad. Yeah, you know, sometimes you've got uh, dodgy looking media, you know, it's got sort of scratches on it and not, not very good condition media. So let's try, I don't know, this one here. Okay, format A there. Sounds horrible. And we've got the invalid track, okay, and it sounded nasty. I'm not 100% sure whether that's the drive making that noise or whether it's just the, something in the disc here causing it to make that horrible noise. It's just not a very good condition disc. Now, if we go back to, this is my known good floppy. I've put uh, two ticks on here because I know it's, it's good and it has no bad sectors. Let's just see if we get a failure here. Format another disc, yes. No, okay, so it seems to be behaving. Yeah, so quite often, as say, I, I would find that I'd have a, you know, a noisy disc like that. It would fail to format. We would get that invalid media or track zero bad disc unusable. And then I wouldn't be able to format a good known disc. So that's what I was getting. I can't replicate it at the moment because the drive seems to be working fine. I uh, kind of wish I could show you what I found. Uh, so I might just try and make it fail. I know for sure that this is a high density disc because it says so on the label. Uh, but let's just try this. I wonder whether it was just this that was causing the drives to fail. The fact that I was trying to format a high density disc on a double density drive. If I try that again, you would expect this to fail. Okay. And it's all well and good knowing that this is a high density disc because of the label, but sometimes you pick up a disc like this here, you have no idea whether it's double density or high density. So you might be trying to format high density discs. And does that upset things? Let's just try it here. It's a known, my known good disc here. Format another, yep. That's oh, perfectly fine. Yeah, so I'm having a bit of trouble getting it to fail. As I say, I'll spend a lot of time trying to uh, get to the bottom of this. I'm wondering if I can get this drive to fail here. Let's try it. So that's B drive. So let's put in the high density disk here. B drive. I expect it to fail. Okay, because it's a high density disc. And now try the good known disc here. Format, yes. Okay, it's all working perfectly. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I was, I mean, I was having that many issues with it. I thought that I'd uh, show you, try and show you exactly what I found but I can't get it to fail anymore. Anyway I will do a little bit more troubleshooting and we'll see uh, if I can show you this failure mode. Now I've connected up a drive here that I thought wasn't working. That's the drive I had connected before. This one used to work then stopped working. I gave up on it and then put it aside and grabbed this one here. Uh, but now I've gone back to this and it is working. Okay, so these are some of the issues that I have found. Now maybe I can get it to fail with this drive. The other thing I noticed, and I'm not sure if this is coincidental or not, but quite often when I came in in the morning and I started working on these drives, they would work fine and then after a while they would stop working. And whether it was to do with me putting discs, bad discs in and out or whatnot, I don't know. I was cleaning the heads, so I've just cleaned the heads on that one. But for some reason it just seemed to fail after a while and ca carry on failing. And I'd have trouble for quite often the rest of the day. 
and then I'd come back the next day, things would start to sort of work again. I'd think oh, I've solved all my issues and uh, it would start playing up again. So I'm not sure whether that's the case now, whether we're going to start seeing failures later. But at this stage, let's just try formatting that one. That's A drive. I bought straight away, so we don't even get that uh, drive sector not found. So bought that. Now I am thinking that either this drive's faulty or we've got similar issues that I'm trying to show you that I had with the other drives. Let's try reading. This is a good known disk. Abort, retry, okay. So, this is kind of what I was seeing. Now, I've been using a program called IMD. It's very handy. It's perfectly ideal for uh, testing disk drives um, and also creating images and reading images, confirming images, things like that. Okay, so I've got a good known disk in the drive there. I'll just start IMD. And it pays to read the manual, the instructions, lots of good information. But pretty much, uh, if I just hit S here to go to settings, I want a drive A selected, that's the one I'm testing. Cylinders for a double density is 40 sides, uh, two sides, double step I want off, and interleave I want as one. Okay, and this, so that set the drive up for the test. Now if I escape now, and I want to do an alignment test, I know that the disk is formatted. You need a formatted disk in the drive. I hit A for align, and, and then just enter there, and it'll try and read the disk. And it's working perfectly and I can tell that because well not a hundred percent we should be getting 18s down this column here the odd time we get a 17 this is the track number here that we can change the head to just by pushing H this is head the second head H1 and back to H0 again um, so uh, in a nutshell it's reading 18 of 18, so it's successfully reading those. This is the track we're on, zero here. We can go up to 39 here, and I can step in increments of 10. If I hit one, it'll go up to track 10. And you can see now it's not happy. It's not reading 18 here anymore. And if I change the head, that's head one, it's better. If I go back to head zero, it's not overly good. I'll show you what I was seeing when I was having the fault, is I'd see this. Just question marks, like it couldn't read a thing. Now I'm just lifting um, the head off very slightly off the disc, and I found that after reading a bad disc, or a disc that appeared to upset the system, that I was getting this, and not any of this sort of reading or even attempting to read on both heads or sometimes actually just on head one I would get a failure like that but on head zero I would um, have a perfect result you know and see there it's really struggling here now and I just couldn't work it out I would reset the system, clean the heads, try again, it just wouldn't read, and then I would assume that the disk or the, dr or the drive was faulty because I knew the disk was fine. Uh, before I had good known disks, it was a nightmare because I didn't know if it was the disk or the drive causing the issue. But anyway, I'll show you what I found. And this might seem a little bit medieval, but I'll show you. Just try and get it in shot there. You can see, albeit blurry uh, up here, that we're not reading any 18s here. We're hardly getting anything. If I lift the head up here, we get nothing. Uh, but what I was doing is I was letting the uh, head just flip down on its spring, like that. And it would be... Look, 
come right. And this is exactly what I was finding. Sometimes I would have to push down on the head just ever so slightly with hardly any weight at all. I know it sounds bad but I haven't had any problems with scratch discs or bad heads or anything like that. Uh, I mean the, they were playing up like this before I even started doing this and quite often it was just a matter of lifting the, lifting the head and putting it back down again. And you know we're um, so we're on head zero there and if I switch to head one perfect so you, you saw it there that's effectively the problem I was having I sort of created it slightly there but this is the sort of thing I saw and if we hop back out of here I'll just show you another quick test as well which is quite handy it's a speed test test RPM so these drives run at 300 the, the double density and you can see the speed is it's accumulative averaged so you know it's it's starting to settle there S spacebar will uh, reset the calculation if I hit space so that should be running at about 300 rpm very close to it and you can see we've got a data rate of 250k here uh, we've got nine sectors 512k per sector uh, what other information there's a heap of different parameters and um, specifications for these floppy drives and that's really what you've got to get your head around um, we're not just dealing with a simple device here it's quite complicated more complicated than I imagined you know when I came into the PC realm as such uh, we were using uh, three and a half inch drives we used five and a quarters a little bit but generally they were just working never really had any problems never had to sort of delve this far into it this is a very powerful program there's heaps to it I'm just showing you the basics for what I use it for at this stage now I've got a good disk in there you saw before that it was failing to uh, format I'll just quit out of there and can we read the disk hey perfectly fine right can we format it sure we can so there you go there's a drive that as I say was working then wasn't who knows if it was or wasn't it was hard I didn't have good known discs as I was saying before uh, but now it's working right so here I was thinking that I had no working 360 drives now I've got three <laughs> how reliable is this going to be I do not know I mean can I make it fail again can I if I put this so that's my good disc there let's put this one in it upset it before try another format here it's working again okay so I mean before I thought well that disc was no good right and so I was putting a whole lot of discs into the bad pile and I was wondering why I had such a huge pile of bad discs and it turns out that there's an intermittent seems to be sort of an intermittent fault when a disc might upset the drive and once the drive's upset even when you're dealing with good discs maybe not ones that you know are good but even if they are good you put them in a try and format it's going to fail extremely frustrating yeah so don't necessarily assume that your drives are faulty i mean there could be other issues going on a little thing a weird thing like i've found here but not just that you've got all your jumper settings your cable uh, configurations and termination to think about as well now the reason I went down such a rabbit hole with these five and a quarter inch drives was because I wanted a good drive for the luggable. This this is one here is a preferable one because it's the one that came out of it. And I also wanted a drive that I can put into my tower here, 360k drive into the tower here uh, that I know is good, and that way I can interchange discs 
I can write disks and read disks on the tower and then bring them into the uh, 5155 there and uh, got a good setup there and a spare drive would be quite handy I've got a spare yeah so I mean ideally I'd like to get three drives running so the next thing to try is a bootable disk now that's where I want to get to with this whole situation is now that I know that this drive's working I've got three working drives here I want to put that into the luggable and I want to boot from it but before I do that I want to try booting from a disk and what better than a MS-DOS 3.3 boot disk which I found in my stash and I know this is good I've tested it and let's try it hopefully this drive will behave okay it's in the A drive there I'm going to power the system up and we'll see if we can boot from that that was a good disk put a tick on that see I've put a see on this one I've got a cross there with a question mark formatted fine okay here we go it's going to try and boot off a drive here and it is booting There we go, we're into DOS, if we check the version, DOS 3.3 there, nice. So next thing to test would be put this drive into the luggable, the 5155, and boot from this disk. Let's see if that works. Okay, I'm going to connect the drive here to the end of the cable, so that's after the twist. So it'll be drive A. If we just plug the power in here. Now I'm just going to um, hold the drive up there. I don't want to lie it down at this stage because the, uh, the little drive wheel here can rub on there by the looks of it. So I just, I'm just going to hold it here to test this here. Okay, just want to make sure everything's isolated there and we are ready to try it let's fire it up we've got the boot disc in crank the old beast up we're looking for drive activity we might get some errors on boot still okay we had access of the drive briefly there Let's hit F1 and it's sounding promising no disk boot failure I didn't like the sound of this drive then try again no it's not liking it maybe I'll try another drive Okay, you might not be out of the woods yet. Let's try this other drive, which I've had good success with. Okay, F1. Disk boot failure. Oh. No, it's not happy. Now these are some of the issues that I've been seeing, the little gremlins in the works. So this is the original drive that I had hooked up when I first started here. I've got the boot disk in that I just tried to boot on the 5155 there and I can read it. Oh, well, maybe can I boot from it again? Yeah, it did boot before on this computer. So there it goes accessing. Yeah, see now it's now it's booting. So we had failures on this disk drive here, the IBM one. 
when it was connected to the 5155 had uh, so successfully booted with this drive here connected to this PC failed on the IBM and so successfully read on this computer here and boots now that this is reading I'm tempted just to you know uh, gently disconnect this in case it's some sort of physical issue take it over to the IBM and see how it goes now okay I really just want to see this machine boot at least once <laughs> cross fingers here you see this drive light here it's not failing straight away it is trying to boot I can feel the heads moving it's going through the process what's that configuration too large for memory ah yeah okay because this machine is only picking up 64k of course DOS won't run in 64k but it's booting from this drive that is fantastic not sure what the reliability issues are at this stage it's similar to what I'm seeing on the other computer uh, but at least that's something I think I'll leave it at that in the meantime uh, at least you can see that the machine was trying to boot and all I really do have to do now is sort out the memory issues and should have a working system uh, albeit for reliability issues with the disk drives which I still have to get to the bottom of but I'm pretty sure that uh, we can get there in the end so yeah that's it uh, for this one thank you very much for watching catch you in the next one